welcome fellow foodies. Now, one of my favorite things to do is put a twist on a classic dish. I love to pimp up the most basic ingredients. So what I'm going to show you today is my version of fish and chips. Now, fish obviously is beautiful if we have a beautiful piece of fish, first of all, and if we can get that skin nice and crispy. So if you are serving soggy skin, uh, salmon or anything at your family meals, uh, most people would probably just be throwing that away or giving it to the doggy. But if you get that skin perfectly crisp, it will indeed become the hero of your dish. And I'm just about to show you how. Now, what I love to serve with my crispy skin salmon, and I've also got a piece of barramundi, so it depends on what you can get, is my take of mushy peas. Now, mushy peas get a very bad rap because the peas are generally overcooked. I've got some store-bought frozen peas, um, so cheap and cheerful out of the uh, freezer, as you can see, and as you can hear, they are still frozen. What we're going to do is we're going to just make those a little bit more glamorous, and what we're going to do with that is a glamorous pea puree. So just into my uh, pot here, I'm going to put about 80 mils of just dairy cream. If you don't like dairy cream, of course, uh, you can use a alternative. I'm going to put in one or two cloves of garlic, just nice and lazy like that. And just to season that, either a half a teaspoon of your favorite stock powder or just some salt. I'm going to use a um, vegetable stock cube. I'm just lazy. I just grab half of it and I just crumble it as I put it in there. And literally that is all we need to do to make our sexy pea puree. So all we need to do is literally put those peas on and all I'm going to do is wait for that cream and the peas to sort of come to heat and they only have to boil once. Your mission is to keep them lovely and fresh and a vibrant green and then we stop the cooking process. I'm then going to hit it with a stick blender or put it into your food processor or bullet blender and that is your pea puree done. While we do that, I'm going to show you how easy it is to have perfect, sexy fish every single time. So I'm just about to show you how to get your fish absolutely sexy every time. And this is going to become one of your signature dishes and a family favorite. My trick is we are going to get our beautiful pan here. And I've got a nonstick pan, nice and swear word hot. I'm not going to use an extra virgin olive oil to cook my fish. Extra virgin olive oil, I always say, is like a little princess. It doesn't like to get hot and sweaty or do any work. I certainly would drizzle my beautiful fish dish after, the t after it's cooked with a uh, extra virgin olive oil. But for now, we want a workhorse oil. And as you can see there, I'm giving it a nice spray out. And that oil will let our pan get nice and hot. So we've got some action happening in the peas here. And I'm just going to stir that. There's a very small amount of cream. I don't want this to be a wet puree, but certainly if it was too thick when I blended it, I could just add some hot water to that. So my pan is definitely ready. I've actually turned these peas off. They are perfect and they've just warmed through. Um, what I'm going to do is, you can see my pan is smoking hot there. I don't want to set off the fire alarm because that always alerts the neighbors. But um, I'm going to put it in that pan and when it hits the pan, I want it to give you a sexy sizzle. That tells you that what we're going to get is a beautiful crust on our fish. And that is when we get a beautiful flavor without having to disguise it in many sauces. I'm actually putting the, not the skin side down, I'm actually putting the other side down. And as I put it in there, I just give it a little fishy uh, shake so that it doesn't stick. So that's depending on your cooktop, might take a minute or two. And you don't need to excessively poke or move the fish. We are trying to encourage it to get that lovely brown crust. I promise you, um, when it looks like that, it eats like that and it's absolutely fabulous. This is much better to me than a steamed salmon or steamed fish. That caramelization is free flavor. Now, I'm going to leave that down there for another minute. These peas are literally done. All I need to do is hit them with our stick blender. Now, I've got one of these lovely stick blenders with a metal head. So I can put that straight into a hot pot. So just make sure if you are using your food processor and it's a plastic um, tub or container that you don't crack that. The next thing I'm going to do once we've blended this is show you how to make some sexy sweet potato fries. So it's as easy as that. I'm literally finishing off with a beautiful vibrant green pea puree. And 
the rest is easy. Of course, this is ready to serve straight away. I wanted to, though, do one more little accompaniment to our glorious fish. And while this oil heats up, I've got one centimeter in here of just a vegetable oil. You can use a canola, a vegetable, a rice bran, anything that you like. And what I'm going to do is just check the rest of our fish. Now, in order to get our fish skin crispy, I am actually going to remove it from the fish completely. And that is my secret. I find that if you leave it on the fish and then try and get it crispy, you tend to overcook your fish, which is sacrilege, absolute sacrilege. So what I've done is put it onto this side, the skin side, and I'm cooking that for about one minute. If we try and take that off before it's cooked, it actually doesn't come off very easily. So the minute that is cooked, it'll come off all in one go. <laughs> so while we're waiting for that skin to cook off, what I'm going to show you is how to make sweet potato fries. Now, here's one I made earlier. I know you know how to peel a sweet potato. I've just taken um, the, the outer peel off. But then what I've got here are some sexy julienne uh, fries. And this is just taking a little julienne peeler, and you can buy these from most kitchen shops. And all I'm doing is it's got a little wavy end, so when you actually pull it through, just as you would normally peel your veggies, it gives you these beautiful long strips, which not only look glamorous and something completely different for your friends and family, and remember these are going to be lovely, sweet, and crunchy, but they also cook down in about a minute. So once our oil is at the perfect temperature, all I'm going to do is pop those in there, and they should just cook up in about a minute. Now, bearing in mind that what we're going to have on our plate, and I always like to choose a spectacular plate. So um, I always say you can ser serve the same dish on a different plate three times before your friends and family might realize what you have done. So that should be enough just for me to show you how this is done. So he's going to go back under there. What I've got ready is a plate with some paper towel. So that is, when it comes out of the hot oil, that is going to drain. Now, of course, be very careful, obviously, when you are handling hot oil in your kitchens. Don't put these into ice-cold oil, okay? They really do need to go into a hot oil so that when you put them in there, and there is going to be a bit of um, steam coming off over here, so maybe just stand back. And you can do them in batches if you prefer. So you can see there that's lovely and hot. And these will take about a minute to go beautiful and crunchy. So while those little fries are cooking, let us have a look at our fish skin. Now, if you are handling quite a long piece of fish, I always find it handy just to have an egg lift so you can just have a little bit of help there. Now, when we take that fish skin off, it is very unappetizing what we see here. But if we cook this properly, it really is going to be the hero of the dish. So just keep persevering. If you can see here where I've pulled that skin off, this is the grey fat. It doesn't look very appetizing. However, when I cook that fat off and render it off, it gives us beautiful fish skin. I call it fish bacon. Um, when you put it fat side down in the pan, it is going to start splattering, obviously, because that's nice and hot. So always just uh, be ready for, for that. It could be scary your first time. So I'll take that second bit of skin off and if you're battling just help yourself there with that um, little egg lift and as you can see here we would never serve the skin like that no one would come back to your fish and chips parties all right so just going to turn this gorgeous piece of salmon over and get that other side beautiful and brown as well and then let's have a look at our sexy sweet potato fries beautiful so coming out of the oil and what we literally will have here is our gorgeous, sexy fish in all of its glory with only a light salt to season it. We can have that beautiful, vibrant, sweet um, pea puree. And then we're going to have these gorgeous orange, also nice and sweet, but crunchy. So we've, we're planning our flavor, we're planning our textures, but we've also planned our colors. So this is going to be a fabulous and very glamorous dish for you to serve to your friends and family. So just remember to manage your heat in your pan. If your fish stops sizzling, it is begging you to turn the heat up. And if there's obviously smoke coming out of the pan, it's begging you to turn the heat down. So always you are in charge of your pan because everyone's cooktop is different. So make sure you are getting the best 
possible future for your lovely fish. Now flip the barramundi over. That skin won't go as crispy as the salmon, but it definitely eats better if we render the fish out of that as well. So now I can always show you how to get a round of applause just by some beautiful, easy plating um, tricks and techniques. So we've got our beautiful, vibrant pea puree. It is still hot enough for me to serve straight away. What I'm going to do is do it on two different plates so that you can see how easy this is. And mine has come out as a lovely mash, so you could take it and make it a little bit thinner. But I'm quite happy with that um, texture and that thickness just like it is. So, like I said, you can also, um, if you wanted to make this sound even more glamorous, what we could do is add a bit of lemon zest or juice to our peas. Try only put that in after you've cooked it, because it does, if you cook it with the lemon juice, it does actually make your peas go black. I'm not sure what the chemical reaction is, but it does. We are ready to take these out. We'll put this oil off and just make it nice and safe, and they can drain to the side there. So just, if you wanted to with your peas, um, and that's in the recipe that I'm gonna give you with this, it's just a little bit of the lemon juice into there. I've only got a little bit left in there, so I don't want to over-season it. And that would really put a signature of freshness and just make it lovely and vibrant. And it sounds much more expensive if you say a lemony pea puree. All right, so those are going to be our lovely puddles of peas. And I'm just going to make a little puddle just by using the back of my spoon just to spread it out. Okay, now our fish is ready. It is gorgeous. And if you like it, if it's beautiful and fresh, what you can do is you can leave it slightly pink on the inside. Now, that is totally up to you. Um, this one is ready to come out. And what we're going to do is just place them perfectly onto our plate over there. I'll do the second plating, so we'll do it all at once. And try to keep your plate nice and simple and uncluttered. Sometimes less is more. If I've got something that is dripping, I might even put a saucer or a plate under it just to transport it so there's no drips on the plate. I call that a transporter plate. It makes your life much easier. We now can adorn it with these very glamorous and very delicious sweet potato fries. So they look like little tangle fries, very designer. And what we want is to create some height on our plate um, that looks absolutely gorgeous and this is going to eat really well i think your friends and family will be very happy with that our last thing we need to do and if you didn't have space in the pan if you're cooking four pieces of fish you might have had to take your fish out before you did the skin and that's absolutely fine and what we are wanting is just to take it a bit further than that that is still uh, soggy skin so i'm going to pop this heat right up render the fat out of that skin and that is going on the plate right at the end so guys while i'm waiting for that to crisp up i have been into my garden this morning and if like me you enjoy growing your own little petals or fresh salad leaves it really does even pimp up the plate further so what i've got is some of the beautiful dianthus now those grow really easily and i've got the pink and the white and what it does just adds that pop of color like a culinary accessory um, and makes us look ever so glamorous and like you really planned it so your friends and family will be very impressed indeed everything that goes on the plate should be edible so don't be too creative with this uh, we could also take some of that lovely lime leaf cut it up with your scissors and that could go over the top as well but i've got some fresh basil which will really go well with our lemon now last but not least our gorgeous fish skin it is the hero of the dish and i think you will love eating that rather than a soggy piece of fish skin so this is definitely one of my family's favorite dishes just that little twist on a classic fish and chips so your mission is always to get that skin nice and crispy the pea puree and i think this is going to become one of your favorite dishes to cook for the family enjoy guys